Hi, this is The Business Guy. So how can you invest in real estate and make 10 times the cash flow? In other words, what is the most profitable way I've found to invest in real estate? Answer, turn your rental home into a home help agency also called residential assisted living. Now the home help agency revenue in the US has grown to $97 billion. And that's enough reason to explore how to start a home health agency of your own. So how do you do it? What are the goods and bads? How much money can you make? And why did Betty White sell her house for $2 million over asking price? Okay, we'll cover that part later. Okay, so first we're gonna give you an example so you can see how this works and how much money you can put in your pocket. Then we're going to talk about the pros and cons. Then we're going to go step by step on the 10 things you need to do to start a profitable home health agency where you can serve the community, help the elderly, and at the same time, give yourself a ton of income. Let's get straight to the point. There are so many videos on YouTube on investing in real estate that are totally missing the best way to make money in the real estate business. Let me tell you right now, as somebody who's earned millions of dollars and owned over 50 investment properties, normal real estate investing is the way many people get eaten alive financially. That's not where the big money is. Here's where the big money is. I personally owned a property that housed the elderly. Here's an example. Let's say you have a house with three big bedrooms. Now prices vary place to place, so adjust these numbers for your market. First, you have a caretaker live in one bedroom. Because you're providing free housing, you don't have to pay that person as much. So your caretaker lives in one bedroom. You have two people living in each of the other two bedrooms for a total of four tenants, two per bedroom. That way, each person has some company in the room. They have somebody to talk to. In Florida, the bedroom needs to be at least 80 square feet for single occupancy and 60 square foot per occupant if you have more than one person. If they share a room, you can put one curtain between them like they do in hospitals for privacy and one at the foot of the bed that you can slide closed. So instead of charging $3,000 a month for the whole house, you can charge, for example, $4,000 per month per tenant for a total of $16,000 in rent. Yes. $16,000 per month in rent for a normal three bedroom house. You'll have the expense of a full-time on-site care person at about $4,000 a month, plus you're providing them free housing. Let's say you have a monthly payment, including taxes of insurance of $2,000 a month. So get this, you're making $10,000 a month after expenses on one house instead of just $1,000 a month if it was a normal rental unit. So it's the same house, but you've just 10 x your income with one simple trick. Do I have your attention? So let me give you some more examples, but first, if you could help me out by clicking the like button below so YouTube promotes this video, I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, you can click the subscribe button so that when more videos come out like this one, you'll be up to date right away. And to say thank you, I'll show you one of my neighbor's houses who just auctioned off his home for a bargain price of $42 million at $116 million under his asking price. Now it gets even better than our example. If you have a nurse on staff, a licensed nurse, instead of an unlicensed person, instead of $4,000 per month per resident, you can now charge about $6,000 per month. Now that's not only better for you, but that beats the heck out of nursing home costs where your tenants would instead be paying the national average of about $10,000 per month right now. So your tenants are getting more individualized care and at the same time, saving money. It's a real win-win. Now, if you have a nurse on staff, your payroll goes up a bit. But even if you pay your nurse $6,000 a month plus free housing, that brings your rental income to $24,000 in rent per month minus your $6,000 a month salary, minus $3,000 in overhead, which gives you a positive cash flow of $15,000 a month. Got that? $15,000 in positive cash flow every month on a three bedroom house, and you've just 15 x your income. Okay, as promised, here are the pros and cons, and then stay tuned for the 10 steps to start your business. Okay, so here are the five pros, the five reasons to believe demand for private caregiver services in the US will continue to grow. Number one, around 12 million people receive some form of home health care compared to only 2 million who live in nursing homes or assisted living facilities, so your business will likely be secure for years to come. Number two, most of those receiving home care in the US are over 65 years old with approximately 97% 
requiring assistance with bathing and 91% requiring assistance transferring in and out of bed, which gives you business security. Number three, 90% of seniors plan to remain in a private home as they age. Number four, more than 10,000 baby boomers turn 65 every single day, and by 2030, 61 million baby boomers will be aged 66 to 84. Number five, as we said, home health care revenue in the U.S. has grown to $97 billion and just keeps growing. So that's why the assisted living business is here to stay and how you can use this information to make 10 to 15 times as much money every month and help the community. Okay, those are the pluses. Here are the minuses. Number one, there is a risk of liability. People can get hurt. Your caregiver can make a mistake and create liability. So we're going to tell you exactly what to do and how to use LLCs to protect yourself from lawsuits. Plus the most important thing is put your tenants first. Keep them safe and happy. So if that's your focus and you're following these steps, the money part will usually take care of itself. Number two, it's a regulated business. So be sure to know the laws and seek legal advice from an attorney and tax advice from a CPA before doing anything here. And number three, you will have employees working 24-7, 365. So we cover the pros and those are the cons. Okay, now as promised, pay close attention to the 10 steps to getting started. Now this is not a video you watch just once. I want you to watch this two, three, four, five times until you master these steps. So first we'll go through the list real quick and then next we'll dive into the details. Step one, create a business entity and open a business bank account. You need this for legal protection, and it makes it a lot easier to sell your business. Call us, that's what we do. We set up LLCs. Now don't call us and ask us about the home health business. We don't give advice on that. Just call us at the number below, and we can set up your LLCs. More details later. Step two, set up a website. This is your main source of advertising. Step three, draft a formal business plan. It's like a roadmap that tells you where you're going. Step four, secure funding. Use as little debt and as much cash as you can, but most people will need to borrow money at least to buy the house you'll use for your first agency. Step five, get a business license. Now this varies. In some states, you can get to work right away. In places like California and Texas, you'll need a license. Step six, obtain adequate insurance. It's a high liability business, so protect yourself with an LLC plus insurance. Step seven, develop a sales and marketing plan. Again, a roadmap to show you how you're going to make money. Step number eight, set up operations. That is scheduling, billing, timekeeping. That is software that will help you manage your business. Step nine, hire your first staff member. This is the person or people who will watch after the residents of the home. And finally, step number 10, train your staff. Have a manual that complies with the laws of your state and that teaches your employees the rights and the wrongs. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you exactly where to go to get and give the proper training easily. Now, not only have I been in this business, this has hit close to home. Even my own mother is doing the I fall and I can't get up thing over and over again. Eventually, she's going to need help like the 12 million other people in the US who receive some form of home health care. So there's a major demand for this type of care and it's time for you to cash in on it. And at the same time, have a great feeling inside that you're doing something to help the elderly. Okay, now really pay attention to this part. Getting into this business cannot, let me say it again, cannot just be about the money. Your first and primary focus needs to be on helping these often helpless elderly people, making them safe, healthy, comfortable, and happy as possible. That's your focus, not the money. And if that is truly your focus and you really care about people, and I mean from the heart focus, the money will flow. After all, you need money to help these people and to expand, help more people, and earn yourself a great living from your hard work. Okay, so got it? You can make a lot of money, but in order to do that, you need to focus on helping people. Okay, now that said, let's dive into the details so you can 10X to 15X your rental income and fill this much needed gap. And if you really wanna be in this business, do it right maximize the money you put in your pocket, watch all the way to the end, and watch several times so you'll know every step because all of the steps are super important. Okay, step number one, as we said, create a business entity. 
Various types of structures are available. There's a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, and limited liability company. Here's the bottom line. The home health agency business is a high liability business. You have elderly people who could suffer injury. You have staff who might do something wrong. And if you're out long enough, the odds are that you will get sued, period. Our on-staff attorneys highly recommend you setting up LLCs. An LLC is a separate entity so that when somebody sues your business, they're suing that LLC and not you personally. Before you stick your toe in the water toward forming your home health care agency, set up an LLC and open a bank account. Then we recommend setting up one LLC for every property you use to provide these services. So set up one LLC to own the house, that is one LLC per property, so that one lawsuit doesn't take all of your real estate. Then set up another separate LLC to operate the businesses for all of your facilities. That is where you will receive payments from your tenants. So as you expand and buy more and more houses to grow your business, set up a new LLC for each house you own. I mean, if your employee causes a problem and the company over here gets sued, you don't want that same company owning the house and exposing the house to seizure. That's why you set up one LLC to own each house and another LLC to operate the residential assisted living business. So the assisted living business gets sued, you just shut it down and start another LLC, but you don't lose the property. So your residential assisted living business will pay lease payments to the LLC that owns the property. Now, an additional benefit to doing it this way is this. Your assisted living business up here, that is LLC number one, can deduct the lease payments as a business expense to the LLC that owns the property. Now, on the other hand, when your residential income hits the LLC that owns the property, since it's rental income, you don't have to pay Social Security or Medicare tax on rental income. So those two taxes combined can save you 15.3% in taxes. Pretty cool, huh? So in addition to liability protection, this two LLC structure, one that operates your business, and another one that owns the house can also save you a ton of money in taxes. In fact, as we said, we set up corporations and LLCs, and that's been my main business for the past 31 years. So if you want to set up your LLC, you can give us a call right now, speak to our attorneys and consultants, or fill out a free consultation form on our website at assetprotectionplanners.com. Step number two, set up a website. In order to operate your business, it is important to have a website. Your website creates your first impression of your business in most cases. So get a domain and set up a website. GoDaddy.com and other services can do this very economically. When your business name and entity is approved, you may also want to go ahead and get letterhead, business cards, and brochures printed. Yes, brochures. Remember, you're dealing with elderly people, and many elderly people are not internet savvy and will actually want you to send paper literature in the mail. Their kids, who usually help them make these kinds of decisions, will be more likely to view your website, so you may want to have both information on paper and information online. Step number three, draft a formal business plan. Next, you'll need to draft a business plan that will be the foundation of your healthcare agency. Now, here are the benefits to you. It will force you to clarify your thinking and your goals for the organization. Plus, you'll need it if you want to obtain financing. Don't skip this part. I know it's not the exciting part, making money is, but you'll make a lot more money if you know where you're going and know how you're going to get there. Hey, you'll need to know these things anyway. So don't just ready fire aim like I did in the beginning. Get things right and write down your plan and your goals. Step number four, secure funding. One of the primary reasons new home care businesses fail is the lack of working capital during the startup phase, plus the cost of the house that you'll buy to serve your tenants. Alternatively, you can rent a house in the beginning to provide these services as long as the landlord agrees in writing. Now, many banks are more than willing to lend money or partner with somebody who can, so you wanna make sure you have a solid financial plan so the banks will take you seriously. Step number five, get a business license. The non-medical home care business forms and licenses you'll need very state to state. So find out the requirements of your particular state. At a minimum, you'll usually need to attend a specific training course 
and become certified in CPR and AED. AED means make sure you and your staff know how to use a defibrillator. In some states, you don't require any other special licenses, but in others, you may need to take additional courses for personal care and caregiver training. Step number six, obtain adequate insurance. Now it's essential to obtain adequate insurance. At a minimum, you'll need professional liability insurance. This protects you from the claims of negligence, malpractice, or incompetence. Step number seven, develop a sales and marketing plan. Three market segments should be at the center of your marketing plan. Number one, older adults and seniors. Number two, the adult children of seniors. So remember, you'll have to sell the kids on the fact that you have the parents' best interest in mind. So show how much you care and really follow through because believe me, they're gonna ask mama how you and your staff treated them and the word gets around. Finally, other relatives of seniors and disabled individuals. With that in mind, here are some great ways to advertise your business. First, launch a website. You'll have to be visible online, which starts with creating a website that's easy to read and navigate on any device. Next, set up a Google My Business page. Most local searches show a Google map with your category of business, so it's essential to get listed on that site. Next, run Google ad bids on keywords to get immediate local visibility for your most important searches on Google. For example, you'd wanna show at the top of Google for location caregiver agencies. For example, if you live in Springfield, you'd wanna show at the top of Google for Springfield caregiver agencies. Someone searching for this term is looking for the services you provide. And ads are one of the best ways to get noticed even when you're starting. Next, get active on social media. Use the social media channels where your target audience is active to start engaging them with helpful content about your services and care packages. Okay, step number eight, set up operations. Scheduling, billing, and timekeeping. You can use software and you'll need this to set up your back office operations, including accounting, billing, payroll, scheduling, and timekeeping software. There are part-time services that you can hire to do your bookkeeping. Step number nine, hire your first staff members. Since your home health care business provides personalized care services to patients, you'll want to hire employees who reflect your vision and provide the best possible care. Your business reputation depends on the quality of care that you provide. Healthcare professionals commonly employed in home health care include certified nursing assistants and home health care aides and actual nurses. There are great websites such as indeed.com that you can use to hire and screen applicants. You'll also want to buy an insurance bond on all your employees if you can. And finally, step number 10, train your staff. Home health care agencies have to meet compliance requirements in different states. For example, Care Academy is an online training platform that is approved in all 50 states. Agency owners can enroll employees and monitor their progress. So that's a great resource to use to train yourself and your staff. And at the end of the training, caregivers will be compliant and authorized to provide services in their state. Get started today. With the demand for private caregiver services to continue rising, now is the perfect time to start your home health care agency or assisted living facility. As long as your focus is on helping people, I don't know of a better way to make money when you invest in real estate. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks for watching. This is The Business Guy.